is, you know, we're going to look at a couple examples of calculations involving strong bases. Now, they share a lot of similarities with calculations involving strong acids because they both completely dissociate. There are a couple differences. Uh, for one, uh, rather than producing hydronium ions, strong bases produce hydroxide ions. So if we're looking for the pH, it often involves uh, an extra step. And uh, we'll point out some other differences as we work through these problems. All right, so in this first example, we want to calculate the pH of a 0.018 molar calcium hydroxide solution. So the first thing I want to do is write the equation for what's going on when the calcium hydroxide dissolves in water. So it's an ionic compound, so it completely breaks up into the calcium ions and the hydroxide ions. So this is one of the big differences between strong acids and strong bases. In a strong acid, only the first acidic hydrogen comes off. In the case of a strong base, it's CaOH2, and both of those hydroxide ions split apart. So what that means is, if my concentration of calcium hydroxide is 0 .0, 0 0.018, because I have a 1 to 2 ratio, the concentration of the hydroxide ion is going to be twice the concentration of the calcium hydroxide. So I would write that as concentration of hydroxide is two times the concentration of the calcium hydroxide So the hydroxide is going to start off at 0.036 molar. All right, so just give us a little bit more room. I know the hydroxide ion concentration now. So I'm next going to find uh, the pOH. So that's the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. So when I plug that into my calculator, I get 1.44. All right, I have the pOH. Now I can use that pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So the pH is going to be 14 minus pOH or 14 minus 1.44. So my pH is going to be 12.56. Right. Now there's more than one way to go from the hydroxide ion concentration to the pH. In this case, I first calculated the pOH and then used this relationship to get the pH. The other thing I could have done is I could have used that uh, the hydronium ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. That would have given me H3O+. Plus, and then I, if I wanted to, I could have taken the negative log of that to get the pH. But this way works uh, just as well. All right. One more example, kind of going backwards from the last one. In this case, we were told the pH... And we want to know what mass of potassium hydroxide I'm going to need to make 200 or 2.50 liters of solution. So in this case, the ratio of the hydroxide ion concentration to the KOH concentration is 1 to 1. So what I want to do is use my pH to get the hydroxide ion concentration. Once I have the hydroxide ion concentration, I know that's what my starting KOH concentration was. If I have the concentration and I have the volume, I can find the moles. And once I know the moles, I can find the mass. All right, so we want to get this pH into the hydroxide ion concentration. So I think the easiest way to do that is to start with pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So pOH is going to be 14 minus pH, or 14 minus 12.7. So my 
pOH comes out to be 1.3. Then I'm going to use that the hydroxide ion concentration is 10 to the minus pOH or 10 to the minus 1.3. So my hydroxide ion concentration comes out to be 0 0.0501 molar. All right. And we said because I have right a 1 to 1 ratio, if this is the hydroxide ion concentration, then this will also be the KOH concentration. So we'll finish it up with a little bit more room on the all right, so as you said, if that's the hydroxide, then I also know that was my starting KOH concentration. All right, so now I'm going to use that molarity is moles over volume. So I multiply both sides by V. So I get that the moles is the molarity times the volume. All right, instead of writing molarity, I'm going to write moles per liter so I can see how my units cancel out. My volume is already in liters, so I don't need to do any conversions to that. So my liters cancel. My moles come out to be 0 0.125. All right, so now I need to use the molar mass to get my moles into a mass. And I'm assuming you know how to do the molar mass calculation, so I'll just tell you. The molar mass of KOH comes out to be 56.11 grams per mole. So I'll take my 0.125 moles. End up with a value of 7. 0.01 grams.